Hi everybody and welcome back. My name is Mark, I'm the Principal Osteopath at ML Therapies and I'm also a lecturer at the Irish College of Osteopathic Medicine. So today we're going to talk about Friot's Laws of Spinal Motion. So we have three laws of spinal motion in Friot's. So in this video we're just going to talk about type 1 somatic dysfunction. So our type 1 is a group or three or more vertebra vertebral segments and when side bending is introduced it's a rotation that occurs across the opposite side. So it's also maintained by long postural muscles and we treat it in neutral. So this is generally a postural issue. So for example, uh, one of the equations that we could use for this would be N side bend left S L R R for rotate right. Or in opposition it could be N for neutral S or side bend right and R L rotate left would be the opposite equation. So again, it's a neutral lesion that side bends one direction and rotates to the opposite side. And also, one of the main differences between a group lesion and a, which is a type one or a type two lesion is that a group lesion is generally treated as and with an MET. Whereas a paired lesion, which is your type 2, is generally treated with a HVT. You can MET a type 2, but we generally treat a type 2 with a HVT, and we generally treat a type 1 lesion with an MET. Hi everybody, in this section we're going to talk about the second Friot's Law, which is type 2 somatic dysfunction. And as always, we're talking about the ease of movement with somatic dysfunction, we're not talking about restriction. So the equations that are written down are in relation to the ease of movement. So type two somatic dysfunctions are generally maintained by the short musculature of the back. And um, with hyperflexion or extension, rotation and side bend occur on the same side. So for example, if there's flexion involved, it'll side bend left and then rotates left. If there's flexion involved, if it side bends right, it will rotate right. The same would be of extension. So rotation also, occur, also occurs around the locked facet, whether that be locked open or locked closed, and that's for a different discussion. The facet open or closed also describes the motion and is not the lesion. Okay, so for example, this could be written down as F or S or E or S. So again, we're just going to describe that again. If we were writing it down as a full equation, it could be F, S, L, or L. So flexion, side bend left, rotate left. If we're writing for the opposite, it'd be flexion, side bend right, rotate right, or F, or, or, S, or. So there we go, guys. We've just spoken about the first two Friot's laws. Our third law is basically a law that states that if we increase one of the motions from flexion extension, side bend, or rotation, if we include one or some of those movements, it will reduce the remainder of the movements that are left. So simply put, if I flex, it will reduce how much I can side bend. It will then in turn reduce how much I can rotate. The same would be for extension, or if I introduce side bend first. So increasing one of the movements will then reduce the following movements that are left out of Flexion extension is a combination, side bend left or right, or rotation left or right. So increasing one reduces the remainder of the planar movements. So there we go, though. There we go, guys. We hope that you've enjoyed the video. We've tried to keep it nice and sh short. So if you like what you see, uh, click like and subscribe below and hit us a follow. So thanks a million, guys. Talk to you later. Bye bye.